If you believe that, raise your hands to him. Sing it again. Forever God is faithful. And forever God is strong. And forever God is with us. Forever. Forever. And forever. Amen. Give praise to the Lord this morning. All right, put your hands together and let's sing this together. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. Because your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. The weak to, to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Because your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Yes, I sing your, your grace, grace is enough. Heaven reaches out to us. Your grace is enough for me. So God, I sing your, your grace, grace is enough. I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me, for me. I will 
sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice, for you had led me through the fire, and in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I Sing of the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the, of the goodness of God, oh, I will sing, sing of the goodness, goodness of God, oh, I will sing, sing of the goodness, goodness of God. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Good morning. That's, that's great. I don't have to ask you a second time. That's great. <laughs> this morning, uh, I want to read from Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verses 5 through 12, the message version. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God, run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Amen. Amen. This morning, some announcements. Uh, of course, Wednesday groups are on Zoom uh, at 7 p.m. Sunday morning groups are also on Zoom at 9 a.m. Sunday morning service is on Facebook Live and in person at 10.30. Uh, want to take and talk about VBS. We had VBS last week, and uh, we had a blast, or at least I did. Um, there's pictures to prove it out there. Um, I got caught in moments of being dressed up, but anyway. Um, we had a blast every night. We had 16 children come, and uh, two of the children were first-time visitors ever at Eastgate. Um, so that, that was a huge praise. The children raised $138.68 in total for children's ministries. And because the girls, that's right, the girls raised more money than the boys. Of course, you guys know this now, but they won't find out till later. But anyway, uh, the girls raised more money than the boys. Pastor Caleb will be covered and showered <laughs> with ice cream and toppings in children's church this morning. More power to him. Uh, a reminder for those that are watching through Facebook this morning, if you would like to give, please follow the link for giving below at my name at this time. It should be showing. 
And a reminder for those that are in-house, today the offering plates are at each exit. And online giving is, uh, once again, on your link below for your screens at home. And at this time, I would like to turn the service over to Pastor George. That's fine. Thank you. Greg, it's, uh, it's prayer time, a special time in our service that uh, we join together our hearts, believing that God hears and answers prayer. You believe that? Amen. Amen. Uh, we have some special requests. One request came to us with a dear lady in North Carolina that really needs our prayers today. So pray, if you would, for that request. Ray has asked that we pray for him this morning, and we appreciate what God's doing in his life. Thank the Lord. Every one of you have a prayer request, am I right? And many of you have uh, unspoken requests that uh, you don't want to speak to anybody, but it's there. And I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand if you have unspoken requests. And let me remind you that as you pray, God is reaching down to touch you to answer prayer. But this morning we want to do something very special. Uh, we all know that Pastor Shannon and Stacy and Sawyer and the family are uh, facing some difficult days. And this week they'll be going to Duke to uh, see four or five doctors there, specialists. And we want to take time this morning to pray for them especially. I know you've been praying for them, and God hears those prayers. But we want to take time this morning to anoint them and pray for them. And the good thing about it, as they go, I have the assurance that God is already going to be there when they get there. Amen? You believe that? God is faithful. So, Pastor Shannon, God bless you. I'm going to ask you and uh, Stacy if you would come and kneel here at this altar. Right here, please. And Sawyer, come on. And uh, I want you to kneel here in the presence of the Lord. I want the, the to come and, and just stand around them. You're part of what's happening here, and you're praying for, uh, for these that you love so very much. Just come and stand around them. There's not enough room for everybody to come, but I'm going to invite the, uh, the board or the leadership team to come and stand with us this morning, and the staff that's here, would you come? And let's stand around the pastor and wife and Sawyer as we lift them in, in prayer. Come on. God bless you so very much. Just gather around. Just You can come around the front here. It's all right. It's all right. God's going to protect us, take care of us. Amen. Thank you so much. I just want to tell you, that in my prayer time early in the morning, God has reconfirmed himself that he is going to answer prayer. Amen? Amen. We can rebuke these tumors in this precious body. The Lord has, God, the devil has no right to interfere, but we're going to commit this to the Lord. We had a special time of prayer a couple of weeks ago, and God gave us his favor and this morning, this morning, we want to come and reach out for our pastor and family. If you want to just reach out and lay your hand upon Pastor Shannon and for Sawyer and uh, for Stacy, all of you are here. God bless you so much. But oh, praise the Lord. God is here and God is going to take care of this situation. Praise the Lord. But we want to pray. Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace this morning with the confidence that you do hear and answer prayer. Amen. There's nothing too hard for you. There's no, too, there's no situation too difficult for you. You are the master of healing, Lord. We believe that. And we believe that what you've done in the past, you can do it again. And so we trust you for that today. Bless these requests, Lord, that have come to us. We all have requests. The unspoken request, oh God, would you reach down and give confidence to each one that's praying. We pray for Ray this morning. God bless him, Lord. And I pray for him, whatever's going on in his life, would you give him 
the assurance that you are his God and that he belongs to you. Pray for this special request in North Carolina, Lord, that has come to us today. Would you go across the miles and minister as only you can? But Lord, right now, we come to this special prayer, time of prayer. We love our Parsonage family. And we found out a long time ago that in the family of God, and we are a family, that when one hurts, we all hurt. When one cries, we all cry. When one has a burden, we all share that burden. And when one has the victory, we all give God the glory. So this morning we come, Lord, on behalf of Sawyer. God bless this young man. Lord, he, he's full of life, and you're going to do something special in his life. I appreciate his spirit and his, his, his quietness that he has within him, the, the peace that he says he has. But Lord, right now, right now, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we place human hands upon this precious head, but you're, you're, you're placing heavenly hands Amen. also and it's because of you. And Lord, I pray that you would anoint this body right now. Lord, you can take care of these tumors. You can take care of all of these problems. Uh, give the doctors wisdom, I pray. But we believe that while the doctors are doing their job well, the great unseen hand of our God is going to be at work. So right now, we commit Sawyer to you. Lord, I pray this morning for our pastor. God bless him. We know that Pastor Shannon and Stacy have a lot of mixed emotions right now. And I pray that you would calm the fears and give him peace that his God is still in control. Amen. Lord, he's preached this for many, many years and now it's come home, but you're still God. Amen. So we anoint Pastor Shannon in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you're going to give direction and help and we believe that you're still God. Praise the holy name of the Lord. We come for, for Stacy. God bless her heart. Oh, what a pastor's wife she is. And what a devoted Christian. And Lord, we have every right to claim your promises this morning. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we place human hands upon her. But your heavenly hands are upon her also. Give her peace for her son and for her family, I pray. Be with them as they travel to Duke this week. Give them traveling mercies, and I commit all of this week to you. Bless this entire family, Lord. What a great family they are. And I pray that you would minister to each one of them at particular times for their particular needs, and that you would prove yourself over and over again to be Lord Supreme. So bless the family right now. Bless the board that's standing here in support, and the staff, we commit it all to you, and we believe, Lord, that you are going to take care of this situation, and that you're going to bless and honor your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said, amen, amen and amen. I say praise the Lord. As I walked through those doors, I felt his presence. And I knew this was a place where love abides. For this is the temple. Jehovah God abides here. Oh, and we are standing in his presence 
We're on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. For we are standing in his presence on holy ground. In his presence there is joy beyond measure. And at his feet peace of mind can still be found. For he is Jehovah. God abides here. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. I think we all need to sing the verse. We are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence on holy ground. These are holy hands. We're lifting up holy hands. For the Lord is here. And where he is, is holy. These are holy hands. We're lifting up holy hands. For the Lord is here. And where he is, is holy. God bless you all this morning. Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I say glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Ron, for that special music, song from your heart. Pastor Shannon, thank you for the privilege of allowing your old pastor to speak behind your pulpit. It's quite an honor this morning. God bless you. Well, let's get into the Word. That's why we're here. And I'm going to ask you to turn to the Old Testament, Second Chronicles chapter 20. Now, you probably haven't been hearing your devotions lately. But 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the first 15 verses. And we're not going to read all 15 verses, but we will be referring back to them as we go through this message together. Let me, uh, let me help you a little bit as you turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Let me give you just a little bit of background and update as to where we are so you can understand it better. Jehoshaphat is now king. He is a godly king. He's a good king. He loves the Lord. He rules his people well. He's, a, he's just a marvelous example of a leader that loves God. He's enjoying his kingdom. But one day something happened. If you read 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Into his chambers came one of his servants, wringing his hands in despair, saying, O oh, king, O oh, king, we've got us a big problem. It's an enormous problem. I just came from the court and I looked around and the enemy, three times strong, has surrounded our city and they're getting ready to attack us. And if they attack us, it's all over. We cannot fight the battle. We cannot no way win. And so here we are. Oh, king, what are we going to do? 
What are we going to do? It was a question that the servant asked Jehoshaphat. What are we going to do? We're facing several problems this morning, aren't we? A host of problems and things around us that are happening. And we're wondering, what are we going to do? Pastor, Pastor George, Pastor George. Have you heard? Last night we had, we had a tornado in Botetai. On top of everything else that's going on in 2020, the COVID-19, it's look at all the masks that we've had. We've got sanitizer everywhere. Everyone's wringing their hands. Is there any more hope? Is there any more belief? Is God really hearing us? Or are they just hitting the ceiling? Mm. Mm. I mean, we're all so concerned. Yes. The economy, Republican and Democrat, no one agrees, even in the church. <laughs> Pastor, what are we going to uh, do? Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, what are we going to do? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you, Paul, for that help. And the question this morning, as we face all of these problems, and as you face the problems of your life, what are we going to do? Jehoshaphat had the answer, and he taught us well. And the very first thing upon receiving the news that he did was to call his people into prayer and fasting. Amen. Now, folks, I want to tell you, even Jesus confirmed this. There are some things that will never happen in your life. There are some prayers that will never be answered except through prayer and fasting. So Jehoshaphat called his people to prayer and and fasting. And then he began to pray a prayer. Now I want you to use your imagination with me for a few moments. I do not think for a moment that Jehoshaphat prayed a quiet prayer. I cannot picture him kneeling at an altar before God. I believe, and you can read between the lines, it's all right, it's uh, Pastor Stevenson's interpretation. Is that okay? But here is Jehoshaphat. I have a feeling that he stood in the midst of his people and very loudly, very loudly and very strongly, he began to pray his prayer. Not that God couldn't hear him, but it was not only for God's sake and for his sake, he wanted his people to hear this prayer. Amen. They needed to hear this prayer. Amen. And the first thing that Jehoshaphat prayed for, it's recorded in verse 6. Here's what he said. Here's what he said. Are you still not God who sits upon the throne of Israel, who is strong and lifted up and still has all power? Now he wanted his people to hear this, and here they did. He wanted his people to understand something. There's a problem. There's a gigantic problem around us. There's something that, that's facing us that's really a dilemma. What are we going to do? And he was calling his people to prayer. But now he said to them, it's time that you get your attention off of the problem and the problems and put them on Almighty God. Amen. It's time that we refocus Amen. and catch a fresh glimpse of God who's on the throne of glory. I say praise the Lord. So that's not bad advice for us today, is it? To get our attention off of all the problems, Paul mentioned some of them, there's that many more, and all the things that are going on in your personal life this morning that you're praying for, would it not be well for us to cast our attention on Almighty God and let these other things go for a few moments? I have good news for you. How many of you like to have some good news? Well, wow. let's try that again. I caught you off guard. How many of you need some good news? Amen. Oh, that's better. <laughs> you know what the good news is this morning? Jehoshaphat prayed it in his prayer. Our God who is supreme is still on the throne of glory. Hallelujah. He still has all power. He still is in charge of everything. And he has the answer to all of life's problems. I say glory to God. I think we deserve a good hand clap of praise for Him. Amen? God is on the throne of glory. He is still on the throne. The second part of Jehoshaphat's prayer is recorded in verse 7, 
when he said, you are God, you are on the throne of glory, and you are absolutely faithful. I was amazed with the praise team. Did you catch that? Every one of their praise courses this morning had to do with the faithfulness of God. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? God is faithful, folks. He is faithful. And Jehoshaphat said, Are you not God who is on the throne of glory that has brought us out to bring us in? Are you not God who has met every need of our life? You fed us and clothed us and directed us and walked with us and blessed us because you are a faithful God. I say praise the Lord. Folks, we're talking about Almighty God this morning. We're talking about our God, if you know Him, who sits upon the throne of glory and who is still in charge of everything. I say glory to God. This is God that from the very beginning of creation that clothed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden because of sin. This is God who was with Noah as he built that ark to save his family. This is God who was with Abraham and Isaac. Remember, Abraham was taking his son to the mountaintop to offer him a sacrifice to the Lord. And on that journey up the mountain, Isaac said, Dad, I see the wood and I see the fire, but I don't see the sacrifice. And God said, Son, relax. God will provide a sacrifice. Isn't that amazing? God will provide a sacrifice. Praise the Lord. I mean, this is God who was with the three Hebrew children in the fire. This is God who was with Daniel in the lion's den. This is God who brought Paul and Silas out of that prison as they prayed. Almighty God who is faithful. Folks, the good news on this Sunday morning is that God is faithful. God takes care of us. His promises are true. Amen. And He will do what He said He will do. I said glory to God. The third part of this prayer is recorded in, uh, in verse 9, I believe it is. Jehoshaphat said, not only are you God who sits upon the throne, supreme, not only are you faithful to us, but Lord, you can do anything. Did you catch that? That's a place for a good amen right there. God can do anything, folks. God can do anything. Did you catch it? God is faithful. There's nothing that God cannot do. His promises are true. What He said He will do. Anything in your life this morning that you bring to the Lord, God said, I will take care of it. I am God supreme. I'm on the throne of glory. Uh, I hear and answer prayer. And I can do anything and everything that you want me to do in your life. That's good news on a Sunday morning. Praise the Lord that God is faithful and God can do anything. I say glory to God. Well, Jehoshaphat finished his prayer. His people heard it all. They heard that prayer. They were amazed at how Jehoshaphat was so calm in praying. And the Lord came to the king and said, Now, I've heard your petition. I've listened to your prayers. And here's what I want you to hear. The enemy is still there all around us. It looks like they're getting ready to attack. The problem is enormous. Uh, we can worry ourselves to death over it. But Jehoshaphat, I want to tell you something. You will not have to lift a sword to fight a battle. You will not have to put a, a, a shield on to fight the battle. Jehoshaphat, I want to tell you something. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine. Wow. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine. I heard Pastor Shannon mention this last week in his message. That should bring us to shouting ground this morning. To realize that the battles we face are really not ours. They belong to God. And God is on the throne of glory. God is faithful. God can do anything. So He can surely take care of the battles. Some of you this morning are fighting battles that you cannot win. Mm -hmm. you're fighting some situations that you just cannot deal with. You don't have the answers for them. All that's happening in this world, it brings us to the place of despair, and 
we, we sit around wondering, how in the world is it all going to work out? And we cannot see the end results, but God has it in control. Amen. Amen. So here we are this morning, fighting battles. We don't have to fight battles that we don't have to try to win. They're not ours. And it's a good thing to hear from the Lord this morning. The battle is not yours, Jehoshaphat. The battle is mine. I'll take care of the problem. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, the battle's not yours, it's God's. Go ahead. The battle's not yours, it's God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, Jehoshaphat, here's the answer. Here's the answer. I want you to get all your singers and bring them into the court. Get all the singers together and bring them into the court. All the singers together and bring them into the court. And we're going to have an old-fashioned praise service. Amen. Have you ever been in one of those? We're going to sing praises and give praises to God. We've already sensed His presence here this morning. And we already lifted up our hands in praise. But Jehoshaphat, bring the singers into the court. And let's lift up our voices in praise to our wonderful Lord who is on the throne of glory. He can take care of the enemy. The battle's not ours. It belongs to God. So let's join together our voices and our hearts and look beyond the problems that we're facing this morning and begin to lift up the name of Jesus in praise unto God. Now, the Bible said they sang songs of Zion. Songs of Zion. Praise the Lord. I'm not sure all that they sang, but I can picture if you will go with me to the outer court. The enemy is all around. They're watching. Everything is happening. And here in the court with all the singers together, they begin to lift up their voices unto God. Now, if you've ever been in a praise service, you know that you cannot be too quiet when you praise the Lord. I have a feeling, feeling that Somebody there began to wipe a tear out of their eye. <laughs> the presence of the Lord was so real. I have a feeling that some dear saint there got a hand up to begin to praise the Lord. Can you imagine that? I can almost see that somebody got two hands up. Oh, Brother George, that's Pentecostal. <laughs> no, that's, pra <laughs> that's praise time. That's praise time. Praise time. Now, I don't know, they didn't have the modern songs that we sing today. Perhaps they would have sung something like this. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was blind, but now I see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or maybe they sang, uh, maybe they sang, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. <laughs> Or perhaps they sang, He touched me. Oh, how He touched me. And I've never been the same since He touched me. Or maybe, maybe, they lifted up their voices to sing one of the old songs that we all love. And perhaps as they stood in the presence of the Lord, their hearts began to respond. They remembered the prayer of Jehoshaphat. They heard the voice of God as He spoke and gave directions. And so now here they are out in the outer courts facing the enemy that's still all around them, but they begin to sing. Do you ever do that? They begin to sing. They begin to sing. To realize that God is on the throne. To realize that God is faithful. To realize that God can do anything. Folks, that's good news this morning. I'm going to share with you a personal testimony that just happened this week. My wife testified to some neighbors about her healing of cancer seven years ago. As she spoke about it, I remembered when it happened. I remember sitting in that doctor's office hearing the news, and all the way home I was crushed and, 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 and cried before the Lord. It wasn't good news. But I listened yesterday with the tears in my eyes, as my wife said, I went through therapy. I went through radiation. I went through all the chemos that was required. 
And then she lifted up her hands and said, I just want you to know I've been healed. I've been healed. God is a healing God. And I rejoiced as I rejoiced this morning. God can do anything in your life that needs to be done, folks. Cheer up. He's God on the throne. But I want us to stand together. And I want us to have an old-fashioned praise time. However you want to praise the Lord, it's up to you. But Matt and the praise team is going to lead us in this old song of victory. I heard an old, old story how that God came from glory. Just sing it. I think the words are on the screen. Let's sing it together. Come on, Matt. Come on, let's sing it for Our God's Savior sake. Lift it, lift it to heaven. Glory. Lift it to God this How morning. He gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Hallelujah. I heard about his groaning. Glory to God. Of his precious blood atoning. Hallelujah. And won the victory. Come on, let's lift it. Let's praise oh, it. Victory. Let's praise it. Amen. Amen. He's my Savior, Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loves me Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. Come on, lift it. He plunged me to victory. He thought I believe, I believe that we can do just a little bit better. Let's sing it Nazarene style, okay? Let's give God the glory this morning. Did you hear what I said? God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. God is absolutely faithful. God can do anything. We have every right to praise Him. Every right to give Him glory. So let's look beyond our problems right now. Just put them aside for a few moments. And let's exalt the name of Jesus. I want us to sing it. Pick it up just a little bit, Matt. And I want us to sing it in victory unto God. If you want to lift your hands, we do that together. Let's praise the Lord. Sing it, Matt. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'll sing it. How my Savior came, came from glory. glory. And how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Ray. God bless you. Hallelujah. I of my sins. And now let's lift glory. it. Let's lift it. Come on. Oh, victory in Jesus. He's my Savior, Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Praise the Lord. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love. Is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. We're going to sing that chorus one more time. It could be that in this service somebody needs to enjoy the victory. You've been struggling with some problems. You've been fighting battles so long that you're not really sure why you're fighting the battles. And things that are going on that you can't handle. 
You don't have the answer for it. You don't have the ability to cope with it. And it could be as we sing this course through once more or twice more that some of you would say, Pastor George, I just kneel, need to kneel at this altar. I need the victory this morning. I need the victory. I don't want to leave this service without the victory. I want to touch heaven and allow heaven to touch me. So we're going to sing that course one more time, Matt. If you'd like to come to pray, come on, there's those that will pray for you right now. Let's sing it. Come on. Let's sing it. I heard about his healing of his cleansing fire. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. Somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Sing it one more time. Oh, victory, victory in Jesus. He's my Savior forever. He sought me and he brought me with his redeeming Lord to God. He loved me ere I knew. Hallelujah. Is to him. He plunged me to, to victory, victory beneath the cleansing. Second again, Matt. Second one more time. I heard about Amen. a mansion. Somebody else he maybe needs to go to pray. Come on. In glory. I heard about the streets of gold. Beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing, praise the Lord, and the old redemption story, praise the Lord, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of now victory. Let's praise him. Come on, oh victory in Jesus, He's my praise the Lord. Savior. several here at the altar. Some of you ladies come. It's all right. We'll obey the rules, but come and kneel on the inside of the altar. And let's pray with these precious ones that have come down. Would you do that? God bless you, ladies. Just be seated for just a moment. God bless you. Thank you for being in this service. Thank you for being online with us. We appreciate it. I see your hand. You have a testimony? Good, good. God bless you. Thank you so much, Peggy. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now let's stand together. Let's go in victory this morning, okay? Let's remember as you face today and the tomorrows that you have a God who's on the throne. And he's faithful to you. He's faithful. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together this morning. Thank you for the Spirit of the Lord 
that is in this place. Thank you for the prayers and the songs and all that has been been done for us and for us this morning to touch our hearts. Thank you for these that have come to the altar. I pray, Lord, peace, peace and glory and hope, whatever they're praying for. And Lord, right now, would you help us as we go from our worship service to go in the Spirit of the Lord to realize that there's nothing, nothing that you can't do. The devil would try to defeat us. But thanks be to God, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so we commit this precious people to you. Go with us and go before us, I pray, in the precious, holy name of Jesus. And all of God's people said what? God bless you.